It's called the Edgar Cut. Riverside High School in El Paso, Texas is reportedly wanting to ban it. What's good, YouTube? It's the fourth Ken, and I'm back with another video. First things first, my engagement has been trash lately. I'm gonna need y'all to hit that notification bell so you guys can be notified whenever I drop a new video. Today, we have an Edgar haircut. So, the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is combing out his hair to lay it in his natural hair pattern. Now, you can use scissors on this, but since I am gonna be doing a drop fade, I'm just gonna use my guard. So, I have my five guard on here, and the lever is closed. But notice how I'm just grazing it. I don't like to take too much off his bangs. I like to keep it natural and just shape up his bangs, you know, like the Edgar haircut. Um, so that's why you see me just grazing it, flicking my wrist towards the end of ends of his hair. And this is gonna be a drop fade with C cups. So it's like in, in between like a low fade and a mid fade. It's not low enough to be a low fade, but it's not like a high fade or anything. Um, so I have my detachable blades and this is my 3-0 blade. So it cuts pretty close, but this isn't like bald. And on this haircut, we're not gonna be creating shape really. We're just gonna be blending it in like a drop fade, but it's gonna appear as if his head shape is a square. That's kind of how he likes it, me to make the shape instead of it like flared out, if you guys know what I'm saying. So right under that, we're gonna be taking our, our liners and cleaning up the bottom of that drop fade. So this is our first guideline, like the basis of the fade. Um, I probably should have debulked first. Now this fade wasn't like amazing, it wasn't the best drop fade, but I feel like it came out clean. I feel like the line really came out clean. So what we're gonna be doing first on this fade is our lever open on our Babyliss FX Clippers. And just notice how I'm like flicking out towards the top of the line. Cause you don't wanna make the line too harsh because then that's gonna make it difficult for you later on. So I'm following that first shape of the first bald guideline that I put in. And right here, he has a mole in his skin. Um, so whenever you're dealing with a client with a mole in their skin, you wanna be careful cause you can nick it. Um, it isn't like that easy to nick it but if you keep if the clipper gets caught onto it you will nick it so now we have our shavers and we're just cleaning up the bottom of the fade getting it razor sharp um i recommend using the shavers because as you can see he had stubble on his sideburn that the liners just couldn't get so that gets it you know bald like a razor pretty much now we're taking out that bottom guy line and notice how at first the lever was halfway and then I closed my lever on my wall magic clips and that's pretty much gonna knock the line right out, especially if your clippers are zero gap like mine. Next, we're gonna be taking our one guard open on our Andes Masters. And this is equivalent to the one and a half guard with Babyliss or wall. This is a long number one. So what I'm, I'm basically debulking and just creating that transition, the basis for the transition. I'm going up like a full inch. Next, I'm taking my foreguard. And this is where the really, the real debulking gets done. Um, this is my foreguard. And I'm just scooping out, flaring out towards the top of the fade. And now we're gonna start blending out the top of that fade. So right above that, you're gonna to wanna to take your six guard. Now, you can just clip over comb this. I am gonna do clip over comb later on in the haircut, but I know his hair pretty well. Uh, I've been cutting him for a long time. Um, I just know what guards work, what, which ones don't. So I'm gonna skip using a five guard, because you don't, all those guards are really unnecessary. As long as you use a higher guard to just flick that out and then clip over comb it later, you'll be straight. Now I have my three guard. Now this is a very important guard in this process. What this is doing is it's removing the middle guideline. What's it's starting to remove it. Um, the two is really gonna get that out. Um, but I recommend the, the Babyliss three guard. It's very good, it cuts precise. As you can see, I'm using the corner of the blade also. Now I switch to my two guard. 
on Babilis. This is my Babilis guard, but I'm using a wall clipper. So just take note that my wall magic clips are extremely zero gap. They cut very close. That's why I wasn't, that's why I didn't even need to use my one and a half guard on this haircut at all because the two guard just got the job done with the wall magic clips. I do recommend zero gapping them. They can cut sharp and the wall magic clips do tend to snag on skin sometimes, especially if they're not oiled correctly. Um, other than that, they're great clippers. Though. I like them. They're really good for like freehanding and stuff. But notice right here, I'm using my, my corners of my blade to really erase that guy line. Now, this is the next important step. You're gonna wanna close your one guard on your wall guard. And you're gonna wanna go up a half inch. Right above that, you're gonna wanna open your lever and then put it halfway. Because remember, we didn't do a one closed yet until now. When we did the one open with our Andes Masters, that's equivalent to like a one and a half. This is the real one. So notice how I have it closed at first. And as I move up, I gradually open it and then flick out. By flicking out, you're gonna eliminate the use or the need for the one and a half guard. Next, we have our wall zero guard now this zero guard is called the half guard it's a premium guard and it cuts extremely short now it does cut shorter than the babilis half guard but notice how i have my lever halfway not open at first i have it halfway and then i close it but since this guard does cut super close you're gonna see me switch to my other guards just to be safe because since this is a drop fade and we're dropping in the back Right here, I switched to my one guard just to play it safe. And then I actually switched to my Babilis half guard. The Babilis half guard cuts shorter than the wall one, but longer than the wall premium um, 0.5 guard. So I'm following that all around the head. I'm being careful near his mole right there. Um, I find that very unique. I love how there's different things in... in barbering that you have to adjust to on each client no one has like a perfect canvas you know what i'm saying that's what i love about the craft right here we're gonna be our lever is wide open but we're closing it gradually and this is the part where the phase really gonna start coming together um we're using our corner of our blades towards the back you really want to blend out the back of the fade because with a drop fade, it's difficult to make it look blended in the back. It can look faded, but then, you know, once your client gets up later and you see it, it's like, ah, it looks like there's a dark spot. So right here, we're going back with our 0.5 guard on our Babilis clippers. So this is the Babilis half guard. And we're using our, our corners of our blade to just detail it. Now this is the final step to the fade. I'm just gonna be clip over combing it. There was some spots I, I left that I just didn't see at the time. Um, maybe it was because of the lighting, I'm not sure. But I think overall this fade came out clean. But when you're clip, clip over combing, there's many different ways you can do it. <clears throat> As you can see, I'm doing many different techniques. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna follow that around, all around the head following the natural curve in the back of his head. And you always wanna take down the C-cup area. You don't want that area to be too long or else you're gonna have trouble with the shape up later on. So right here, my best advice to shape up an Edgar type haircut is to not use water, not use hairspray, to just start shaping it up. Um, that's the best way. I know I did a hair Edgar haircut tutorial in the past and I use hairspray and water and all that, but 
you know, I've been experimenting with different techniques. This is the best technique in my opinion. No hairspray, no water, just comb the hair down in its natural pattern and shape it up. That's it. Now, the side that I'm doing right now, the hair is coming off easily because it's laying straight down. There is no wave or no type of, you know, like a swivel in it, if you know what I'm saying. Um, if you notice the right side of his lineup, you notice how the hair kind of swerves a little bit. It's not necessarily a wave, but it, it swerves a little bit. That's the side that's going to be hard because it's hard to shape up a hair with a wave in it. You know what I'm saying? Because the hair isn't laying flat. Now, right here, we're going to get started on his vertical bars. My best advice for vertical bars, do not comb them to the side. Comb it down and shape it up. So as you see right here, I'm grabbing my scissors because when when they wake up in the morning, notice how I've curved it. I'm curving it down. I'm combing it straight down so that that's how he's going to get up and do his hair in the morning. He's going to comb it forward or brush it. He's not going to comb the vertical bars to the side. So you want to lay it in his natural pattern. But this is what I was talking about with, with it was like a swerve towards his vertical bar on this side. Um, yeah, don't mind me right here. I'm just getting some content. Make sure you guys follow my Instagram. I posted a video of this. This cut is like a couple weeks old. But um, yeah, as you can see, it's crispy. We're not even going to use enhancements on this. He doesn't like enhancements. That's why I'm taking my time on his lineup. Of course, it's sped up and stuff, but right here. So right there. Where I cut that piece, that chunk of hair, it was very difficult to cut that. I recommend using a deep tooth blade. So not the regular babyliss, but a deep tooth blade to get the, the bulk of the hair done. And then once it's time to detail, then you take your precision blade. That's what I like to call it. This is like the bulk blade where you can cut Edgar type haircuts with this blade. I think it's the titanium 2.0. It just has deeper teeth. Now this is the precision blade. It has less, not less, but thinner teeth. So it's more precise. I think this cuts coarse hair better than the deep tooth blade. Um, but this, this is a great trimmer to detail. As you can see, that's crispy. And I ain't even use enhancements. This is the before. And this is the after. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And it's the fourth Ken, and I'm out. Peace.